Hey, Leo students, <clears throat> Mr. Kaczynski with you. Uh, we're going to try take two of this because I forgot to share my screen and I did an entire recording of these solutions already. That's a half an hour. I can't get back, but here we go. All right, so I want you to try number six on your own uh, and then press, you know, so pause the video, try number six on your own and then press play and I'll do the solution. All right, here we go. So we're supposed to use this equation um, to model the distance from a destination for someone driving on the highway. The input variables T is for time measured in hours. Output is D. Okay, so we got input variable T for time uh, and then output variable D, oops, D for distance. Got it. Measured in miles. Graph the equation and use the trace function. All right, so let's graph this thing. 24 minus 45x, 24 minus 45t, but I'm going to use x. All right, I, I think it might actually be easier to graph this if we talk about c and d first. Or no, yeah, c and d. So let's do that. Uh, what's the real world meaning of that 24? Uh, 24 is the starting distance from the destination. in miles so um we're starting 24 miles away and the real world meaning of the 45 is we are traveling 45 miles per hour yeah because we're measuring it and yep yeah traveling 45 miles per hour. So that's like our rate of speed here. I'm gonna do that in red. And actually this, I'm not gonna do in blue, I'm gonna do in green because we do our starting distances. I've been color coding that in green, okay? So uh, now I think I'm gonna go back and answer these first two questions, okay? So let's let's go to our window and let's set this up. X, X is our T time zero hours, I'm, I'm just going to one hour. It, it's gonna take less than an hour traveling at 45 miles per hour to go 24 miles, right? So I'm just gonna go a max of one hour. A minimum zero miles, let's go up to 30 because 24 is our max, dis max distance and then we're getting closer from there. So if we graph that, <clears throat> there's our line. And if we trace it and we look for where the distance is 16, so looking for y equals 16 and it's right about right about there okay 0.18 so that's that's our answer so t is going to be oops man this might be tough I'm used to writing with my mouse at work but so 0 0.18 hours I have to type a lot more i think than than write okay so 0 0.18 hours all right and what about three miles let's scroll to the right and we got oh that's pretty close about 0.47 miles or 0.47 hours mouse is very loud too 0.47 hours all right so if we go back to the main screen we can even check that we can do like 24 minus uh 45 times 0.18 it gives us about 16 and second enter. I can change that 0.18 to a 0.47, just under half an hour, 2.85. It's just about three, close enough. All right, solve this equation. I mean, we, we already did. It's 0.18 hours. I mean, that that's the solution, but I, I guess we could do it with a dirt table to make sure, let's do that. So let's do dirt table. All right, so we're going to pick T, multiply it by negative 45, oops, and then we're going to add 24 to it. Disappointing. I got to change where my mouse placement is. There we go. Um, all right, so how do I undo that stuff? I'm going to subtract 24. Oh, my gosh. And I'm going to divide by negative 45. 
The last version was so much better than this. Sorry. So I got to do two more videos too. All right. And then our result was 16. So let's do 16 minus 24 is negative 8. And then divided by negative 45. That is 0.18, about. It's 0.17 repeating. All right, so we've done it a couple different ways there. All right, um, now I want you to try number seven. And then when you're all done, press, uh, press play. So you're gonna press pause now, press play when you're done and check out my answer. All right, here we go. So we, they want us to write equations in intercept form that'll provide the locations of Percy and Quincy at any jump number. All right, let's type this. Let's go y equals, let's see, what's per, let's go y, um, I'm gonna handwrite it, sorry. So y for Percy, oh, that's a big Y, equals his starting position. I think that's, is that nine? Let's say it's his starting position. And then he's jumping to the right, so we're adding. And he's adding, what, one, two, three positions with every jump. Or X is the number of jumps. There we go. Oops. Let's make that blue. All right, and then for Quincy, His starting position is 49. And he's actually jumping to the left. So we're subtracting one, two, three again with every, with every jump. There we go. What's the input variable? The input variable is number of jumps. And when, oh, what about the output variable? Sorry. The output variable, or y, is location on the number line? Or just location, I guess? When do the rabbits pass each other? There's a couple different ways we do this. I think I'm going to... Go to y equals, I'm going to use a table this time. Let's go 9 plus 3x, and let's do 49 minus 3x. And then I'm going to go to the table. Jump 0, there's their starting positions. So after one jump, Percy is at 12, and uh, Quincy's at 46. And I'm looking for where y1 ends up being bigger than y2, and there it is on the seventh jump. So during the seventh jump is when they hop past each other. We'll say on the seventh jump. So we could have done that with a recursive rule too, I guess. Um, it takes a lot longer. So I think I'm gonna use the equations. We could graph it too. Let's go um, window zero to 10 jumps and position from zero to say 50. So there's Percy and his locations on each jump and Quincy on his locations in each jump. If we trace it, and we go scrolling to the right, we see it's at about seven, seven jumps where this line goes over top of the other line. So seven, enter. As opposed to six, where it's below it, okay. All right, next up, you're going to try number eight. So pause the video, try number eight, and then press play, and I'll show you my stuff. Ready? All right. Yesterday when I was running, I was thinking about this problem because I was looking at my calories burned. Um, Lewis is beginning his new exercise workout, his training his trainer shows him a table with his workout time in minutes and the actual workout calories burned. Okay. And the target calories he wants to burn. So find out how many calories Lewis has burned before beginning to run. Okay. So that's a pretty simple question. 
It's right here. It's 400. Oh, wait. So they're, they're asking us multiple things. I better get each one of them. So find out how many calories is burned before beginning to run. That's 400. And then how many burns per while running? That would be, well, let's do this, 400 calories. And then while running, he does, what's this, plus 20.7 every minute. Let me do a recursive rule to check this. So let's go second quit. Let's just do 400, enter, plus 20.7. That gives me 420.7, 441.4, 462.1, 482.8. So it's it's 20.7 times 4421 calories per minute. And then total calories he wants to burn. <clears throat> that is this 700 right here, right? 700 calorie target. All right, write a recursive rule that generates the table values listed for actual workouts. So for these, okay, I, I kind of just did that, uh, but let's write out the whole thing. So let's go. Zero, 400. Enter. And then. Answer one. We're going to add a minute. And answer two. We're going to add 20.7 calories burned. That is almost exactly what I was burning per minute yesterday. I was doing 20.1. So I oh, if Lewis was running faster than me. Maybe he's a bigger guy than me. Enter, enter, enter. There we go. So we got our starting amounts here. Oops. We've got our... Changes right here. There we go. Use your recursive rule rule. Excuse me. Recursive rule to write a linear equation in intercept form. Okay, so we're going y equals our starting amount times our constant rate of change, or plus our constant rate of change, 20.7 times x. My handwriting's getting a little bit better. It'll get worse as it gets more tired here. So 20.7x. Write an equation that generates the values listed for the target calories. Oh, we're supposed to check this first one. So let's go y equals, let's get rid of these. Let's go 400 plus 20.7x, go to the table, second graph, and yeah, that's giving me all the values that are in the table. 400, 420.7, 441.4, good. All right, this one, don't overthink it. It's just y equals 700. So if I go to y equals here, go to y2, 700, go to the table, that gives me all 700s. Graph the two equations on your calculator. Um, your window should show a time for up to 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes, wow. All right, so let's go window, zero to 30 minutes. And how many calories are we gonna burn in that time? I, I don't know, let's go 1,000. Graph it. I did it, just about. Oh, there's our 700, okay. Graph the two equations, your window should show. What is the real world meaning of the y-intercept of the workout equation? Okay, well, the y-intercept of the workout equation is the calories Lewis burned prior to starting his workout. the 400, right? All 
what's going on here. I'll do that in green. Let me do it in green. There we go. Um, okay, so if I use the trace function and I go zero, enter, see, there's my 400. Use the trace function to find the approximate coordinates of the points where they meet. Okay. Just tracing, going to the right. That looks like they meet at about 14 and a half minutes, maybe 14.5. That looks like pretty darn close. Real world meaning of this point. Okay. Um, so the point where they meet is 14.5, call it 700. This Lewis needs to work out for 14.5 minutes to burn 700 calories. An equation whose solution gives the number of minutes Lewis should run in order to reach his target and then solve it. Well, the equation is just when is 700 going to equal 400 plus 20.7 times x. And I guess at this point, we'll we'll have to do a dir table to solve this, right? Let's do that. D U R. Um, how about we're going to pick X. We're going to multiply it by 20.7. And then we're going to add 400. The result is 700. To undo these things, I'm going to subtract 400. Oops, I should say 400. I'll have to zero up. We're going to divide by 20.7. Just those two things. And that should get us an answer here. Oops. Get out of there. Quit. So we're starting with 700. We're going to subtract 400. That's obviously going to give us 300. And then that 300 divided by 20.7 gives us 14.5. There we go. All right, next up, number nine, Joe and her lawnmower. Go for it. Press pause. Tap it, and then press play, and I'll show you mine. Here we go. Um, all right. Joe mows lawns after school. She finds that she can use this equation to calculate her profit, give some possible meanings of these numbers. All righty. I think uh, minus 300 might be the cost of her lawnmower. So, like, she's starting $300 in debt, something like that. Um, Some more. There we go. Let's see what else. 15 is the amount she charges. Mow a lawn. And N is the number of lawns she mows. Our independent variable. So I'm going to do that in blue, do that in red because it's our constant rate of change. I'm going to do that in green because it is our starting amount. Invent two questions. Okay. I think the couple questions we could ask one, maybe if I, you know, how about this? What will Joe's profit? Be if she mows how about 14 lawns. That's like two per day. Uh, let's make it three. She's got to pick up the pace. 21 lawns, three per day for a week. Uh, and then other than that, how about um, how many? Let's go the other way. How many lawns does Joe need to mow in order to make one thousand or to profit? How about that profit? 
$1,000. These are a couple of good questions we could ask, maybe saving up money. Solve this equation for the variable n. Oh, wait. Oh, solve for the variable n. Okay, so I think we're going to have to do a dirt table here. And if we're picking n, and then we're going to multiply it by 15 and then subtract 300. To undo those things, we'll add 300. Oops. And divide by 15. What's the result of that look like? Well, we ended up resulting with her profit, right? So if we take her profit and add 300, and then take that sum and divide it by 15, it would be profit plus. 300, sorry, divided by 15, and that would be N. Sorry, this is brutal. I'm gonna have to choose a different location. Maybe I'll have better luck than where I'm currently sitting. What does the uh, equation in 9C tell you? Um, how about uh, this equation? will tell us the number of lawns Joe needs to mow to make a certain profit. I could, I could answer this second question up there. So, I mean, the original equation, you know, the minus, oops, minus 300 plus 15 times 21. So if she mows 21 lawns, she'll make 15, profit $15. But the second equation could be used to, to make, to answer the second question, which is, okay, profit of $1,000 plus $300, and then divided by 15, this would tell us that she needs to mow about 87 lawns to make $1,000. All right, what have we got left? 10 and 11, just two more. Okay, so try number 10. Press pause, try number 10, and then press play, and I'll give it a shot. Okay, so June threw an object off a cliff. She threw it down at five meters per second, sped up as it fell because gravity's pulling it down. Table shows a partial list of the data. Write an equation to represent the speed of the object. This one's kind of tricky because you got to pay attention to the fact that, I mean, yes, we we know that its speed was five miles per hour to, or five meters per second to start, and that was given us here um, when it left June's hand. Okay, so we know that. But then, as far as our rate of speed, it's not four point nine. That's what I bet you a lot of people make that mistake because that's actually over a half a second. We actually want to look at the fact that um, it's picking up speed at 9.8 um, meters per second every full second. So I can show you that in the calculator because 4.9 divided by 0 0.5 is 9.8. Okay, so our recursive rule is actually that if we start at 5 and add 9.8, that gets us a second later to 14.8. And then at two seconds, we'd be at 24.6. All right, which isn't in the table. So here's our equation then. How about y equals five plus 9.8 times x. There we go. Object speed after three seconds. Well, this is after two seconds. So I guess if you use my recursive rule, say, 34.4, so 34.4 meters per second. I basically almost had that done. Um, I guess I could do it on a calculator too, and or the with a with a table here and do five 
plus 9.8x. Go to the table, go to three seconds. There it is, 34.4. If it were possible for an object to fall long enough, how many seconds would it would, would pass before it reaches 83.4? I think I remembered when I did this before. There it is, it's right there at eight seconds. Eight seconds. So just using the table is a great way to do that. Um, you could also like undo this. So we, we would take that 83.4 and then subtract the five and then divide by the 9.8. That gives us eight seconds, or we could put the eight back in five plus 9.8 times eight seconds. We could use a graph. So zero to 10 seconds. When's it going to get to about 100? Trace it, go to the 83.4. About there at eight seconds. There it is. Lots of different ways to answer that. What limitations do you think uh, this equation has in modeling the situation? Um, eventually, the object will reach its, I'm just going to use this phrase because I know it, terminal velocity, uh, maximum speed. And, you know, it just doesn't keep getting faster forever, okay, because eventually, like, the drag of the wind and the friction with the, the air, it just maxes out. So it's not going to just keep getting faster and faster and faster and faster as long as it falls. All right, one more question here. Number 11, press pause, try it, press play. I'll do it. All right. Paula's cross-training for a triathlon. She's burning calories. When she cycles, she swims, she runs. Before designing an extra pro exercise program for Paula, her coach consults a table listing rates for calories burned during various activities. Okay. Monday, Paula starts to work out by biking for 30 minutes and then swimming. Write an equation. Okay, how does she start? She starts for biking for 30 minutes and then swimming. All right, so her equation is going to be y equals the biking for 30 minutes is going to be 3.8 times 30. And then the swimming is going to be plus 6.9 per minute. So 3.8 times 30 is 114. So let's go y equals, we'll clean this up a little bit, 114 plus 6.9x. So that's the equation that models her Monday workout. On Wednesday, she starts her workout by swimming for 30 minutes and then jogging. Okay, so let's do this here. In terms of the number of minutes she jogs. Okay, so 30 minutes of swimming. Swimming is 6.9, so 6.9 per minute times 30 minutes uh, plus Jogging is 7.3 calories per minute, so 7.3x. So let's simplify that. 6.9 times 30 is 207. So y equals 207 calories burned during a warm-up plus 7.3 calories for every minute that she jogs. And we got to write another one here. Friday, she starts her workout with 15 minutes of swimming, so half as much swimming. So couldn't we just do half of 207? Also known as 6.9 times 15. Yeah, there we go. And then biking. Oh, wow. And then biking for 15 minutes, then running. Oh, there's a lot going on here. Okay. Well, let's do this then. Let's go y equals. So what does she do? She does the swimming. So 6.9 times 
times 15. And she does the biking 3.8 for 15 minutes. And then the running, running is, oh, 11.3. Got it. First time I did this one, I messed it all up, but now I'm seeing it. Got it. Okay, here we go. So let's do the 6.9 times 15 minutes and the 3.8 times 15 minutes. She's starting at 160 calories burned. Where she starts running. That's 11.3x. There we go. And I think we just got to do some calculations now. How many calories does she burn on each day if she does a 60-minute workout? I'm typing this because my hand's done. All right, so Monday, she's going to do 114 plus 6.9 times 60. 14 plus 6.9 times 60, which is 528 calories on Wednesday. She's going to do 207 plus 7.3 times 60. O seven 7 plus 7.3 times 60. Notice how I'm like showing my work. Even though, you know, I'm typing it in the calculator, I'm still kind of trying to show, you know, where these numbers came from. 645 calories. Takes me a little extra time, but I'm trying to model what I expect you guys to do. And then on Friday, she's doing 160 plus 11.3 times 60 minutes. All right, so 160 plus 11.3 times 60 minutes. This is going to be your biggest workout, isn't it? 838 calories. All right, there we go. All done. We had a good time. See ya.